This is actually a yield of... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god wow that's a yield all right this one's looking absolutely insane wow guys i cannot believe what i'm seeing here this is just absolutely insane i mean guys right there, there i mean <laughs> you guys are looking at the numbers it's 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 crazy right it's absolutely insane hello my fellow investors and welcome back to another viewer requested stock recommendation so guys let's spin the wheel to see which one of your stocks that you guys recommended we're going to be taking a look at fundamentally in this video And we got the stock HEI. And honestly, I need to get rid of FTNT because we already did that one. But HEI, guys, was brought up by. And this company, guys, was brought up by none other than Lord Baron DK. Lord Baron K. Just like with the other ones. And I did check this one is a company. It's not an ETF. So let's take a look, guys, at this company and see if the current share price, this is looking like a buy from a fundamental perspective. So we are here, guys, at the company's website, and uh, you you know, I I thought this was like a completely different type of company. I thought this was like a beer company. I swear to God, I thought this was like a beer company because I'm looking at my Heiko. It sounds like he Heineken, but no, this company, it, by the looks of it, it makes like aerospace and like parts. I guess you could say for like I guess what you're seeing right now, like a jet, like a like a jet airplane or something like that, right? So that's kind of cool they reminds me almost like of like not exactly but like a legged and plaque kind of thing except for like mattresses and that and that kind of stuff i know they make springs for mattresses it's more like for like high you know military kind of stuff so kind of cool in my personal opinion now let's come over into the company profile to see what they actually do we got Heiko Corporation, through its subsidiaries, designs manufactures and sells aerospace defense and electronic related products and services cool and then there we pretty much got all of that uh at least what the company does the company's flight support group segment provides jet that's awesome and aircraft components replacement parts thermal insulation blankets and parts renew wow renewable reusable insulation systems and specialty components thick segment also distributes hydraulic and pneumatic structural interconnect mechanical and electromechanical components for the commercial regional and general aviation markets and offers repairs and overhaul services for jet engines and aircraft components parts wow guys this is absolutely insane like that's that's a that's a freaking industry right there that's awesome like, this is really, really cool overall. It's actually located in Florida, too. That's really, really nice. And they were founded back in 1957. So they've been around for quite some time. Really, really interesting. Let's take a look now at their earnings summary. They had earnings as of February 27th. EPS normalized actual came in at 67 cents, missed by 4 cents. EPS gap actual, 67 cents, missed by 4 cents. Revenue actual, $621 million, which is beat by $27.28 million. Now, let's jump into the calculator we got the ticker for hei market cap of 21.2 billion dollars and a pe of 68.62 with a whopping share price of 177 dollars and 63 cents just with this pe alone guys is giving me a major major red flag but a company is usually worth more than just a pe now if we take a look at this graph guys is absolutely crazy massive massive rip we got on the one year up 30 percent year to date 16.84 percent 52 week range is 126 dollars 95 cents to a whopping 180 dollars and 59 cents if we try to look over here for the lowest point it was actually during covid we reached a low of 61 dollars and 66 cents at least in the past five years wow that is just absolutely massive guys i mean with a current share price of 177 got we are near pretty much 52 week highs so not the best time you know to buy into a company but you may have some interesting components at least when it comes to the fundamentals now they do pay out a dividend of 20 cents which is, i mean guys 20 cents come on all right well this is actually a yield of <laughs> oh my god wow that's a yield all right but you know what 0.11 percent guys is a payout ratio of only 7.34 with a five-year CAGR of 
14.63%, absolutely massive, a dividend growth of five consecutive years, and ex-dividend date passed as of January 4th, payout date was in January 23rd, and they pay their dividends semi-annually. Very curious as to when this semi-annual kind of payment is. And by the looks of it, guys, it is in January as well as in June. So it actually should be coming up next month when they announce their, I guess, next dividend. But yeah, they do pay it semi-annually. So, you know, it is what it is. Now, coming back into calculator, we can see that based off of this <laughs> 20 cents, we get, guys, that they pay out $27.4 million in dividends being paid out every single year. After this is paid... They have left, guys, in their five-year average free cash flow, $357.64 million. And as of their last free cash flow, it is a lot more at $408.52 million. So that's actually really, really good. These payout ratios are 6.28%, really, really nice. And the five-year average, it is 7.11%. So all in all, you know what? Right now, as it stands, when it comes to dividend perspective and dividend safety, this dividend safety is looking really, really solid overall. I should actually make that like its own metric, like dividend safety of like, like out of 100. What is it? 50%, 100%, like how safe it is. I should probably do that. That sounds like a really, really cool idea. So let's jump into the fundamental. Starting, of course, with the net income, we got five years ago of $259.2 million, two one year ago of $351.7 million, increase of 36%. Now, we did see here a small dip from four to three years ago, probably because, again, three years ago was COVID, so that kind of explains it. Um, you know, a lot of companies, well, all companies were pretty much just shut down. And, well, this kind of bled also into two years ago as well, which is interesting. But, guys, as of one year ago, you can see that not only has it essentially erased, well, I wouldn't say erased, but surpassed the three and two year ago value. It even surpassed the four year ago value as well. And on top of that, if you just ignore these two and you just follow this trend line, overall, it's still kind of following that trend line, which is something I like. Overall, I'm actually going to give this a grade of like 90%, mainly because nothing to do with a three and two year goal value, but mainly the small outlier jump from five to four years ago. But again, it was that far along, guys. It just, it really isn't that big of a deal. So that's what I'm going to give at 90%. When it comes to the free cash flow, this one actually looks really, really good. Like, not going to lie. Out of all things, this is not looking too bad. We got five years ago of $286.6 million, two one year ago of $436 million, increase of 52%, with an average of $385.02 million. Now, we do see that jump from five to four years ago, but it was a really long time ago, guys. Now, the dip did happen in the free cash flow during COVID three years ago, but take a look at this. Two years ago, they were still under the four year ago value, but look at that, guys, 408 four years ago to 407.9 million two years ago. I mean, could you say that it was essentially flat from if we just take a look at four and two year ago values? Yeah, pretty much. And on top of that, look at this. One year ago, it still increased even more than that of four years ago. But the increase wasn't that big to make it a massive outlier like you see from five to four. So overall, I'm actually going to give this a little bit of a higher grade in the form of 95%. Not bad. Looking now into the revenue. This one, honestly, it's not looking too good. But let's actually take a look at this. We got five years ago of $1.77 billion to one year ago of $2.21 billion. Increase of 24.22%. The decrease did happen here during covid and it did increase from three to two years ago but you can see that it's still under the four year ago value by a, by a significant amount however as of one year ago it did go up to even surpassing that of the four year ago value as i said of 2.21 billion dollars so overall i'm actually going to give this i'm going to give this an 85 well here's the thing also the five to four year ago value isn't that much of an increase either so I'm actually going to give it the same grade as that of the net income, a 90%, not bad. Assets minus liabilities. This one's looking absolutely insane. Wow, guys, absolutely wild. You can see consistently increasing year over year. Not going to lie, look at that. Consistently increasing in the single outlier year. Guys, absolutely amazing. Average total assets, it is $3.8 billion. Average liabilities, it is $1.24 billion. Doing this difference, we get $2.54 billion. I'm going to give this, guys, I'm going to give this a 100%. This is looking absolutely gorgeous overall. Now, when it comes to the cash flow minus liabilities, 
Unfortunately, it's choppy, but I guess you could say it's a little bit understandable at some points. You can see here the lowest point here was three years ago, so we can pretty much ignore it because it was again COVID related. But if you take a look at the 5 4, skip number three, and go to number two years ago, you can see it's a very, very consistently increasing kind of metric. However, you do see a small dip here from two to one year ago. So, you know, it's still a lot lower than the average of negative $712.8 million. But overall, it's it, honestly, the graph doesn't look too bad. It's heading in the right direction, which is something that I really like to see. So I'm actually going to give this guys an overall grade around like a 60% um, no, actually, no, I'm gonna say a 70%. Yeah, I would, I would say a 70% mainly because it's, um, it's only one time when they really went down in the past five years, and that was two to one year ago. So, yeah, I'm gonna give it a 70%. You could make the case for higher or lower, but for me, I'm gonna go halfway 70%. Looking now at the shares outstanding, I cannot believe what I'm seeing here. This is just absolutely insane. I mean, guys, I, you know, the metrics so far have been showing us amazing, amazing, amazing. But unfortunately, the shares are standing, it is very consistently increasing. Like, to almost a T. I mean, we got five years ago of 133 million, two one year ago of 137 million. Increase of 3% on the five year. And from the previous year to the current year, it is 0.22. And you can see that these graphs, like these lines over here, they're touching that trend line every single time. So very, very consistent increase overall. Now, the thing with this is, I personally believe, as of today, they are very, very expensive. Just based off of the PE, right? Just based off of the PE. And again, I've also taken a look at the discounted free cash flow, so I kind of know what the numbers show. So the fact of the matter is, is that they are expensive, in my personal opinion, just based from a PE perspective. And, well, this selling of shares may actually be strategic. So that actually, it's, it's bad, but it's not like... Oh my God, we need capital. We need this now. No, you can clearly see that their cash flow is amazing. Their revenue is amazing. Their net income is amazing. So I can't really blame them for that. Overall dilution though, it's still bad, but it's not a lot. I'm actually going to give this, believe it or not, 75%. Like I get it. I don't like dilution. Strategic dilution though is fine. And also 3% in five years is not that bad either. As opposed to other companies that are a lot bigger when it comes to market cap, that are diluting a whole lot more. And lastly, when it comes to the cash and clones, they currently hold 142.6 million with an average of $152.32 million. So when it comes to the overall grade, guys, I mean, what do you expect, right? What do you expect? You have three of the profit metrics, all three of the profit metrics pretty much, right? 90 and higher. So yeah, you expect this thing to be good. Assets minus liabilities is absolutely banging, 100% beautiful. The worst one is the cash flow minus liabilities, which honestly, it wasn't even that bad, right? And the shares outstanding, as I just explained, it's there's a reason why, or at least I believe that there's a reason why it's happening. So not bad overall. Total grade, guys, of 88%. Absolute insanity. Not bad, right? Not bad. This is looking like a really, really solid company from a fundamental perspective. However, what price do we pay for this thing? Because again, you don't want to pay whatever price. And we just saw with a massive PE and very, very near 52-week highs, it may not be all that good to invest in it right now but all right guys so let's jump into now the discounted free cash flow and um right there, there i mean <laughs> you guys are looking at the numbers it's 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 crazy right it's absolutely insane so yeah um needless to say this company is overpriced Right? I mean, target share price, not adjusting for debt without inputting anything, just the required rate of return of 10%, $28.41. And then adjusting for debt comes out by $4, $24.78, guys. So, I mean, the PE even says it, right? We could have just guessed it based off of the PE alone. So, it is what it is, right? Now, let's input some of these numbers in and see what we can get. Almost guaranteed we're not going to get to 177 anywhere near $177, right? So we got over here, guys, seeking off a growth of 16 freaking percent. That's insane. So let's uh let's put that in. Honestly, I'm I'm going to put that in as the median, all right? So let's put 16% for the median. For the low one, let's bring it down to like 13%. 
And for the high one, let's say 19%, right? Let's say 19%. Actually, Mike has been getting me into looking at the sector median. Sector median is only 8.7. So that's already a massive, massive differential. I, but you know what? I'm going to go with what the revenue growth is expected for HEI, all right? So... I'm only going to take a look at the se sector median when they're somewhat in line with each other. Th this is not in line at all. So let's do that. And now for the projected share buyback, guys. I mean, they have been very consistently been issuing 3%. So let's do 3% for the median, right? 3%. For the lowest assumption, let's do negative 5. And for the highest assumption, let us do, well, let's just do negative 1. Let's just do negative 1. And with this, we get the target share price of $42.16 to $53.10. Now adjusting for debt, we get $38.70 to $49.50 with a margin of safety of 5, 10, and 15, $32.90, all the way up to $47. I mean, <laughs> guys, the current share price is 177. So yeah, it, it's expensive. It's expensive. Yeah, this is a company that I would personally would love to buy. Like their fundamentals, I just showed everybody the grade and the fundamentals. Their fundamentals are amazing, amazing. The only one that's kind of meh is the again the shares are standing, but I already explained that it's actually not too bad, right? So very very good company in a very very good industry that i don't think will ever go away right i mean for as long as we have humanity which is you know as long as we're alive uh we will always have government unfortunately and because we'll always have government we will always have war and war constitutes weaponry and those weapons need to be maintained which this company does so I think, guys, that they are here to stay. They're almost like a Lockheed Martin. They're, in a way, a company that's just like, oh, I don't want to invest in it because I don't want to promote war. Yeah, but the problem is, is that there is no such thing as moral investing, right? There really is no such thing as moral investing. It's just what line you decide to not cross. So with me, you know, I am of the belief that, you know what? It is what it is. We're always going to have war, unfortunately. It really is a terrible thing. But if we're always going to have it and my tax dollars are going to go to it no matter what, you know what? May as well get something out of it, right? May as well get something out of it if, 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 I, if I'm forced to do it through the state. So it is what it is, guys. Please do your own due diligence when it comes to this company. This video is not due diligence. I didn't even take a look at their earnings. So take a look at their earnings. Do your due diligence, guys. Make sure you check out what the calculator tells you, right? I have all of this available for free. See what numbers you get. Maybe you believe that they're going to start buying back shares, right? Or maybe you believe they're going to do a lot more than 19%. Guys, Maybe you just want to change the requirement of return, right? Do all of that. Make it your own calculator because this is not financial advice and every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. Thank you so much for everybody who has subscribed, guys. We, well, oh my God, we just, we really do appreciate it. We really, really do. And, you know, the best way that you guys can help us is by, is by, you know, commenting, liking, subscribing, and of course, word the mouth sharing. You'd be surprised how much that helps. Oh, just a simple like and just watching the video you know, more than 20% of the length, it does a tremendous amount. Like, it that does a tremendous amount. Anybody who wants to donate us through, like, a super comment or, like, or like a tip or anything like that, more than welcome. But again, we just really want to grow the company because I would love to have a podcast in the future where we, you know, do a daily thing, look at stocks, look at uh, news, look at markets, like, do all that stuff. So I really would like to do that. That's kind of the goal for this YouTube thing, to eventually have my own channel and eventually navigate out of youtube right so the best way that you guys can help us do that it is by liking subscribing commenting and of course sharing thank you so much for everybody who has done that so far now taking a look at this dividend guys 20 cents isn't a lot um unfortunately and we just got that this company is very much expensive so putting in five thousand seven hundred twenty five dollars this is an annual deal yeah, guys, this this annual yield is nothing. Six dollars and forty five cents. This is a company you don't invest in for its dividend. You, you just don't, right? You invest in it because they have solid fundamentals and in, in a great industry. I'm very very curious though. Let's put this into let's put this into the forty seven dollar mark and see what the dividend would be then. Doing that, guys, it only goes up to $24.36. All right, so yeah, not a company you invest for its dividend, even if it falls. Definitely a company you invest solely for their great fundamentals, which they do have. And of course, if we take a look now at the options chains, we can see that, well, actually, they don't really have a lot of options expirations here. It's literally May 19th, June 16th, August 18th, and November. That's it. So 
When it comes to options liquidity, guys, this is not looking too hot. And the premiums are pretty lackluster too, as you can see right here for May 19th. However, going into June 16th, we can see that the premiums are a little bit better, especially on the put side and even the call side, honestly. So if by some miracle you manage to buy this thing at COVID lows and you still own this company and you want to sell some covered calls on it, guys, you will get a really nice one capital gain and two, uh, you know, $5,600 or even $10,300 if you were to sell an in the money call for $170. So absolutely massive, absolutely insane. Again, not something you guys want to do. If you want to do that, that's pretty much what you would get. Do the math to figure out what your capital gains would be if you bought this thing near COVID lows. So all in all, what a great image to end in. All in all, guys, HEI, really, really good solid company when it comes to the fundamentals. Really, really solid. Very, very expensive. Not liking that kind of price tag. I would personally like to buy it a lot lower. $50, maybe $60. No more than that, honestly. But Anyways, that pretty much does it for this video, everybody. Like if you like, comment, subscribe. You guys can follow us on the new tech sites. Link is in the description below. So with that said, peace out, and we'll see you all next time.